you've got to come back to this place of I can make adjustments inside myself. That also, by becoming aware of how you have contributed to problems in the past, and that, that awareness allows you to start making adjustments, that allows you to trust yourself more. Mm-hmm. And when you trust yourself more, as I mentioned in the beginning of a conversation, then you can start to trust men more. When you start to trust men more, you're not in a fight or flight place. So now you're able to see the good in every situation as well as what you don't like. It's a balanced perspective. It's never all bad. It's never all good. You got to get to the place where you can see the good and see the not good. and Nothing causes stress for you. And you're able to look at the beauty. I'll give you an example of Bonnie when I'm dating her. And this is Again, finding the one and getting your one to find you as the one. That's also a big question women have. How to get them the one Absolutely. You know, so, so again, it's it's love. It's women are the embodiments of love. And that's expressed to men through trusting, accepting him as he is and appreciating him. So I had been in a, a relationship before Bonnie. I'd been married before Bonnie and divorced. And one of the things that caused us problems in my marriage, my first marriage, was... Uh, and by the way, before I married first, I tried to marry Bonnie and she wouldn't marry me. <laughs> she said, you're not ready. And she was right. And so I married another woman, made all these mistakes. And I said, now I'm ready. I promise you, I'm ready. I know better. And so we got married 34 years, actually. <laughs> Very sweet marriage. And but so here's the moment I remember when I said, I'm going to marry Bonnie. And it was uh, after maybe almost about nine months after, 10 months after my divorce from my first wife, I'd had time to do my processing and healing and so forth. And then I called up Bonnie and just hearing her voice, I knew she was the one and I was ready for her. And, but yeah, still, I, I, you know, making a marriage commitment is a different story, but she's the one I want to date now and I want to be with. Then I took her on a little romantic getaway and we were driving in California from Northern California to Southern California. And somewhere I took the wrong turn and we ended up seeing a sign saying Nevada, Las Vegas, a certain amount of money. <laughs> so <laughs> we we're going to be late to where we were going. I made the wrong turn. And in my previous marriage, oh, that would have been the beginning of a war. Okay. That would just Ooh. been the worst thing. You know, my incompetence. How could you miss the turn? We're going to miss the talk. I can't believe it. I can't rely on you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So I'm in the car with Bonnie. And I pulled the car over to look at the map. And this is before we had GPS and all that. And I look at the map and there, but there's a sign saying that we, we just passed the sign saying Las Vegas on the way. <laughs> so I said, I think I took a wrong turn. And Bonnie said nothing. And while she's sitting there saying nothing, I'm like, oh my God, imagining the worst is going to happen now when she finds out we're going to miss this talk. She wanted to go here and the dinner and everything we're going to do. And, uh, and, so there I am. And I said, you know, I don't know exactly where we are. And she said back, I don't know where we are either. But this is the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. And I, I literally, in my mind, I knelt down before God. and I said, thank you, God. She's here. You know, this is the woman I want to live my life with. So beautiful. sometimes, uh, and, and to, to pack, unpack that, I made a mistake and I didn't get punished for it. I made a mistake and that she was able to find something positive in it. And that's an ability that she was culturing. I have to say she was reading a book that most women today might find a bit sexist, but she was doing her work to prepare for her soulmate. And that was called a book called Fascinating Womanhood. Mm -hmm. And it's all about letting the man be the man. And, and maybe if you take it too far, you would end up being a, a submissive woman in an abusive relationship. Uh, but because I'm not an abusive person, a lot of those techniques worked really well on me. <laughs> and, but would not, not always work well in other situations, which is like never to complain. You see, you have to learn. You can't just tell a woman, don't complain. You have to help a woman learn how to ask for help. Because behind every complaint is really a request. Right. Complaining only pushes men away and brings out the worst side of men. The bottom line is everybody wants to be right. You know, if you, if you win the prize, everybody loves you. If you're a loser, they don't notice you. We want to be right. We want to be seen as capable and confident. So when we're not seen that way, we get defensive. And men more so than women. 
because testosterone is produced when other people cheer for you and go, yay, good job. Your tank, your team wins, your testosterone shoots up. You know, you make some money, your testosterone shoots up. People say to you, oh, you're right. A good dating skill, by the way, whenever it's true, a man will perk up, you know, <laughs> and you say, what a good idea. He perks up because it bumps up his testosterone. And a woman could perk up a bit too, bump up her testosterone, but it's testosterone is not the major hormone for well-being for women. It's when a man makes a gesture of caring, consideration, understanding, empathy, respect, those values, when he behaves in a way that expresses those things or speaks in a way that, uh, that expresses those sentiments, her estrogen goes up because she feels safe, she feels seen. She feels that I have support, I have backup. I could ask for help and get it. Not that you always need help, but there's the challenge for women today is what do I need? I'm pretty good on my own. Because yeah. you've been on your testosterone side. And maybe you can take a moment to express how many women feel being single for a while. Yeah, well, I, you know, I just had a flashback because I could remember one of my girlfriends and I having a conversation. And this was back when I was single in my 40s and I had a good corporate career and I was very self self-sufficient and independent. And I thought I did have a pretty good life. And I can remember us having this conversation, this friend and I, and we said, boy, a man's going to have to be real, real good to have a place in my life because I already have a really, really, really good life. So I do think some of that hyper, hyper focus on uh, finding the perfect man and some of that kind of came into play um, in my own life. And although I always felt like I was very feminine in my appearance and things like that, I know in some ways I showed up as the better man in the room in certain situations in dating until I came to understand more about some of the things that we're talking about. And so when I work with women now, and many of them have had, have or do have successful careers and are very strong and independent and are operating more on the masculine side. It's easy for me to see and identify because I've lived that, I've experienced that. And I've also now learned through very long uh, and winding road of dating and now having been married to my husband for 14 years, how to dance in that feminine and how to receive and one thing I think that is that is missed by so many women, John, and I know you'll back me up on this because you've said this um, as well, is that I don't think we as women understand how meaningful it is for a man when we do receive, I call it graciously receiving, because we're gracious and we appreciate and we acknowledge and we and we let them know. Uh, how meaningful that is to them and how how good that feels to them. And I think you're right. I think we tend to get in the pattern of thinking, well, it feels so good when I when he gives to me, I want to give, 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 give back. And so we have women giving too much too fast, too soon. Absolutely. And the, the challenge for women is, and I, I want to point this out, a little subtlety here, is if your estrogen levels are low, then a man doing things for you really doesn't make you feel that good. Mm. You have memories of when a man does something for you, it feels good, but then he actually does it. Uh, estrogen allows you to appreciate his gestures and what he does provide for you. And what allows you to, so I, I, I have a, a real wonderful metaphor to understand that concept. And then that motivates a woman to recognize what can I do to raise my estrogen levels. But in Men from Mars, I write about little things make a big difference. And men don't understand this. You know, man thinks bigger is better. And yeah, a few bigger is better is a good thing, but it doesn't produce a lot of estrogen. If you have normal estrogen levels and you're a woman, and I bring you 50 roses as a gift of my affection and love, you'll get a big surge of estrogen and you'll go from feeling happy to happier. And that's what romance does. So I can give you 50 roses or I can give you one rose and it will have the same hormonal reaction. It's like, oh, uh, the rose, how sweet. Okay, then that's very sweet of you. Maybe 50 creates a little extra bump for some, but bottom line, if you have plenty, if you're happy and your estrogen levels are at a happy level, 
A man does a little more, you get a big response, or he does a big more, you still get the little response. If you have low estrogen, he can give you 50 roses and it's eh, or he can give you one rose and it's eh. So what I teach men is you got to do lots of little things to build that estrogen up where she can really appreciate you. And what you were doing and what you beautifully expressed is taking responsibility as a woman to soften and to potentially look at ways to express my appreciation. Because if you express appreciation, estrogen also increases. It's like uh, there's a little game that, that we played. We did a little process in our relationship. And it's really, really helpful. And recently I found out one of my daughters just naturally did it with her partner oh. for 10 years because I was just mentioning I'm teaching this new exercise that I used to do with Bonnie. And it's, it's where you say to your partner, first of all, you set it up. If you're a woman, you say to the man, and, and, and this is not a dating skill, but more of a relationship skill, but it's, it's still that concept applies. Do you love me? She says to him, and he says, always says, yes. And you say, how much do you love me? And he says, <laughs> with all my heart. And she says, tell me why you love me. And it forces a man, you're playing a game. He has to get in touch with how to articulate his feelings. Because if you don't use language to articulate your feelings, they cannot increase. They cannot be felt. You can only feel from the prefrontal cortex what you feel in your emotional reactions, but you come from the prefrontal cortex. So, you know, you feel, I like someone. Why do you like me? And why else do you like me? What's well, obvious, don't you know? Of course I know. Of course I know, but it's fun to hear. It's fun to hear. It feels good to hear. And it actually stimulates estrogen to hear. And that's why for women who are independent and you're dating, where you may not yet be at a point where you can say, why do you like me? And be playful about it. But you should certainly be at that place long before you have sex with somebody. Just want to point that out. Some people just like have a date together, talk, and then go off and have sex. Whoa, long before that, you should be able to articulate why I like you and maybe why I'm turned on to you and why I'm affectionate with you. And see, words is a way of connecting. And it's a way that takes us away from being animals. If a man has sex with you from the animal side of him alone, he'll not be interested in you later. And you will feel a sense of emptiness and depletion because you were not seen and heard and there wasn't an affection and a genuine warmth. Uh, so I'm, what I'm saying there is these are fun games you can play, which is, well, why do you like me? But long before that is, why do you like doing this? Maybe it's something you like to do. This is where you're not pointing out differences in a dating experience, but where you're pointing out similarities, which is, why do you like this? And why I'll, give me five reasons you like that and be playful with it and say, well, I'll give, and then you get five reasons. So it's, it's a back and forth. Uh, so a couple can do, do you love me? Yes. How much do you love me with all my heart? And why do you love me? And then I say something. And then, uh, I say to her, do you love me? And she says, yes. Why do you love me? Or how much do you love me? And why do you love me? And it's, you can even feel kind of angry and defensive at your partner, but you do this exercise. It pulls out, it pulls out the love. 